All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So today we're gonna declutter my concealers and my correctors. Uh, so this one is probably gonna be the most difficult one out of all the declutters that I'm doing because I love concealer, as you can see. I have way too many though, and some of these can definitely be decluttered. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna try to swatch as many of them as I can. I don't know that I'll be able to swatch all of them because this video will be way, way, way too long, but I'll try to swatch some of them for you. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm just gonna go in section by section. All right, we'll start with an easy one. This is the One Size Beauty Butter Silk Concealer. This is one of my newer concealers that I love so much. I've talked about this over and over and over. This is definitely one of the best concealers I've tried in quite some time. I wear the shade Light Number 3, and this is, to me, the most similar to... I would say like the Hourglass Vanish Concealer. Um, it is pretty full coverage. I don't think it's like the fullest coverage ever, but it's very good coverage. Um, and it's hydrating, it's not drying. The shade range is really good. Um, and I love this. I reach for this constantly. I use it under my eyes and on my face sometimes just for foundation. I love this one. So obviously a keep. Next, we have the Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer. This one I really, really like. I wear the shade 1.5 Neutral in this, and this is a really good shade match for me. So this I would say is a solid medium coverage. Um, it's good, but it's not as much as I would say like the one size concealer. It's definitely more of a natural finish concealer, which I really like, and it's just a really nice one. The packaging is nice, the formula is nice, pretty decent color range, and yeah, this is a good one. I definitely want to keep it. Next, we have this concealer. This is from Jouer. This is the Essential High Coverage Liquid Concealer. I use the shade Wheat. So that there is the shade Wheat. And what's interesting is this is described as a neutral undertone and so is this. This is that Dior concealer. To me, the Dior does not look super neutral, but I just goes to show you from brand to brand, neutral, warm, cool doesn't necessarily mean the same thing. This is the shade Wheat from Jouer. I like this a lot. This I would kind of compare to the Dior, honestly, in terms of, um, coverage. The Jouer concealer is described as full coverage. I guess if you used a lot of it, you could maybe get full coverage from it, but I don't ever really use it and think that it's a super full coverage concealer. That's just my opinion, but it is described that way. And I will say this color is really better for me than the Dior, but I do like the Dior concealer. So I'm going to keep both. Um, but this one is good. Definitely, I would say, can be a bit heavy looking if you use too much, but I do like it and I want to keep it, so this one is staying. Next, we have the infamous Tarte Shape Tape. So I have the original and I have the newer Ultra Creamy one here. Both of these are in the, in the shade 22N, which is light neutral, but I don't know if you can tell just by the bottles. The colors are not the same. The creamy one is definitely a little bit lighter to me than the original, even in the same color, which is interesting. To be honest, I have tried both versions of this, and I do not see a huge difference between the creamy version and the original version. So there is the original in 22N. This is the creamy version, also in 22N. So that's the creamy one. 
that's the original one. So you can see this one is definitely a little bit darker. I'm torn on these because part of me wants to keep it because I feel like shape tape is such like an iconic concealer, but I don't reach for these anymore, hardly ever. The original shape tape years ago when I first got into makeup was like my favorite thing in the entire world. I just thought it was the greatest thing. And then I just tried more and more and more and I realized, you know, it's not the absolute best concealer that I've ever tried. I still think it's good, but it can definitely be very drying, very cakey if you apply too much in my opinion, but it's decent. <sighs> Honestly, I think I'm going to declutter the original. This one is really old. I don't know how long I've had it. This one is fairly new, the ultra creamy one. So I think for now I'm gonna declutter the original and keep the ultra creamy, but this is mainly because this one is newer. Like I said, I don't see a whole lot of difference in terms of how they look under your eyes between the original and the ultra creamy, if you were wondering, but I'm gonna keep this one for now. Next, we have the Kosas Revealer Concealer. Okay, this is the shade number four neutral, or it's 4N, but online, when you look at the description, it says golden, so I'm not really sure why they have an N with it, but anyway, there it is there. Here's the thing with this concealer. I really like this. I think this is a really great hydrating, medium coverage concealer that's very flattering under your eyes. Again, that's it right there, but this color is too yellow for me, so anytime I use it, I have to mix it with something, which is unfortunate, but I do like this enough to keep it, uh, but definitely don't love the shade 4N. I know several of you have told me to look at shade, I think it's 3 in this and it's not as yellow supposedly so I don't know I probably will buy shade 3 eventually I just don't I have so many concealers right now I don't really need to buy another one <laughs> but um, I do like this a lot I think it's a really good one so I do want to keep it I just don't love the color all right and last in this section is the Sephora collection bright future concealer and this is the shade number seven custard honestly i'm on the fence with this one I've, I've never been able to fully make up my mind about it it reminds me in consistency of the kosas concealer um but you can see this is I would describe this as like a peach, almost like an orangey color. This is number seven. I remember I had a hard time picking a shade in this when I was trying to pick one. And the few times I've used this color, I don't like it. Like to the point where I don't think mixing it with something is going to help that much. Like I said, it's similar to the Kosas one, the consistency and the coverage. And I like the Kosas one better. So I think... I'm going to go ahead and declutter that one. So we have Dior in 1.5 Neutral. We have Jouer in the shade Wheat. We have Original Tarte Shape Tape in 22 Neutral. Creamy Tarte Shape, tart shape Tape in 22 Neutral. Kosas in 4N. And uh, Sephora Bright Future in number 7. Honestly, um, yeah, I can tell just by looking at that. That's way too orange and peachy. It almost looks like a corrector. Um, and then I swatched the one size concealer on my hand earlier, but I'll swatch it here so you can see it with the others. So this is the one size concealer in the shade light number three. Okay, so we'll move on to row or section number two. Next, we have the Rare Beauty Concealer. This one I actually had back when it first came out in a lighter shade than this, and I did not like the shade at all. So I ended up decluttering that a while ago, but I went back and got this shade, which is 210 Neutral, and this is a really good 
shade for me. So this one I do really like. Um, and I do like this enough to keep it. It's definitely, I would say, a medium coverage, pretty natural finish. It's kind of, it's not my favorite concealer, but I do like it um, enough to keep it. So I will go ahead and keep this one. Okay, next is this. This is the Bare Minerals, the original liquid mineral concealer. So this came out... I guess it was earlier this year when they released the liquid version of the mineral foundation and I will tell you right now I don't I do not really like this concealer and I feel like the shades on it are really off this is shade 1w so this is one of the fairest shades that it comes in and I can wear it but, I mean, it, it's definitely a little bit light on me. It starts to look kind of white under my eyes, which I don't like. But then when you go up one notch to, like, a 2W, it gets really, really dark. I feel like there's too much of a jump between the really fair shades like this, and then it goes straight to, like, a medium, medium dark. I feel like light to light medium shades are lacking in this concealer and honestly don't like it enough really to mix it with anything else it's okay but the coverage is not great I don't ever think it looks particularly great under my eyes when I use it and yeah I think I'm sadly gonna have to declutter this I love Bare Minerals but not a huge fan of this one Next we have this one from Tarte. This is the Tarte Hydra Sealer. It's from the Rainforest of the Sea line. And this one is the shade 20 in Light Neutral. So I'm going to have to declutter this. I do not. Every time I use this concealer, I'm just not. I don't know. I'm not blown away. I don't know how to explain it other than it's just kind of mediocre to me like it's never I'm never going to choose this over some of my others like I'm just not going to it's fine it's not like the worst thing I've ever used but it's not I don't know it's just not something that I see myself reaching for and I usually know with concealers pretty quickly if I'm gonna if it's gonna be one that sticks around or not and I kind of knew right off the bat with this one this was not gonna be a favorite so I'm gonna go ahead and declutter that one all right before we continue something else I was gonna just say about concealers in general is I feel like concealer is the hardest thing to get right I feel like the color of concealers is so hard to get right because you don't want to go and this is just my opinion you I don't think going too light is very flattering on most people but you also obviously don't want to go too dark so it's like you want to find something between being too light and being light enough so that it brightens but it doesn't brighten too much but then it's not too dark I just I feel like concealer is just something that's really tricky because um, you'll see a lot of these colors look vastly different because Colors range so much from brand to brand, and I don't know. I just feel like concealers are tough. This is uh, the Pat McGrath Sublime Concealer in the shade L5. I really like this one. This is a really good color for me. It uh, is a really good neutral undertone. So that's it right there. It's not super yellow. It's not super cool. It's a really good shade match for me under my eyes. I typically like something on the neutral side if I can pick for a concealer under my eyes, um, but this one I will say is pretty full coverage and it does not take much product. One or two little dots of this is really all you need under your eyes, but I like this and I definitely recommend this one, so I do want to keep that. Ooh, okay, <laughs> next we have the Clay de Peau concealer. So this is like their cult favorite concealer. It's a stick cream concealer. And this one is 
what color is this ivory okay i never ever reach for this and i'm not sure why because i do think the the color under my eyes i think would be good um so that's it there i don't tend to go for like a stick concealer like this under my eyes so i think that's probably why I don't reach for it and to be honest this is very old I've had this for a few years um, and like I could tell just then it's very very dry feeling I got this on sale one time um, I think it was at Neiman Marcus or Bloomingdale's they were having a really big makeup sale and that's when I got this but I just feel like I'm not going to use this sadly I mean, it's, I used it a little bit more back when I first got it, but I don't know. It's just nothing that I feel like I can't live without. So I am going to declutter Clay de Poe. Next is this one from Zoeva. This is the Authentic Skin Perfector Retouch Concealer. This is definitely going to be a declutter. This is the shade number 50... Certain, C-E-R-T-A-I-N. Um, so I used this actually in a video a few weeks ago and I hated it so much I didn't even post the video. Um, and it was mainly the color. Okay, the color of this, I hope, I don't know that it's even going to show on camera, but this is like very, very yellow, golden, almost a little bit of an olive undertone and I did not like it at all. I even tried mixing this with something else and I just did not like it. Um, it the, the color is too far off for me to try to keep it. So this one is okay, but not anything spectacular or anything I would really recommend. So I'm gonna declutter. Okay, then we have the Bare Minerals Bare Skin Serum Concealer. So this one has sadly been discontinued and I guess they replaced it with that other Bare Minerals Concealer, the new mineral one. Um, and sadly, I think this one was a lot better than the new one. Um, that's it right there. This is the shade Light. It is very liquidy. It is truly like a serum texture. It's a very thin, uh, formula so I will say this does crease easily because it is so thin but I like it a lot I'm sad that you can't get it anymore though all right I'm gonna put this in the keep for now I will probably go back and go through the keeps one more time at the end because I like that one but I just don't know how much I'll use it since you can't even buy it now but We'll keep it for now. Then we have the new Lancome Tint Idol Ultra Wear All Over Concealer. This is a definite keep. This is a really good solid medium coverage, natural finish, just hydrating enough. Not so so hydrating that it creases easily, but it's not um, definitely not dewy. It's just a very natural hydrating concealer really good medium coverage I like this one a lot I wear the shade 215 and I like this this is a definite keep next is the cover FX power play concealer this is one of my favorite concealers in my collection this is so good every time I use this I love how it looks it is really good coverage I would say this is medium to full coverage and it's hydrating but not too hydrating it's not matte it's just a really good right in between concealer but the coverage on this is really good it's exactly what I like and it's not drying sometimes when you get this much coverage with a concealer you kind of sacrifice hydration under your eyes and with this one you don't um, I love this a lot so I wear the shade in light 2 and this is a really good one. No one really talks about this, I feel like, anymore. No one really talks about Cover FX, but if you haven't tried this and you're looking for a really good coverage concealer, 
that doesn't feel super heavy under your eyes, I would look into this one. Then we have the Bare Minerals Bare Pro Concealer. So this is also a stick concealer. As you can see, this is the shade Fair Light Neutral number three. So I used to use this quite a bit back when, around the time when this came out, which was a few years ago. So that's it right there. And again, it's Fair Light Neutral number three. This is a really good spot concealer, but I have another concealer that I just like more than this for spot concealing. And this is not something I would ever use under my eyes. I would only really use this on my face. The other one, you may know which one I'm talking about. I would use under my eyes and on my face and the color I also think is just a little bit better. So I am gonna declutter this. I don't, I think this is a really good concealer for if you have blemishes or just any spots that you wanna to try to cover. I think this is good, but the other one that I'm talking about is better. So I am sadly going to declutter that one. And then the last two in this section are both the Makeup Forever Ultra HD concealers. So this is the self-setting concealer. So they claim you don't have to use any powder with this. I have two of them. I have shade 22, which is pretty light. So I don't usually wear it on its own. I usually mix it with shade 21, which is a little bit darker and a little more peachy. Um, and together, I really like the color of these two. I don't love either of them on their own, but I like them mixed. So I usually use these together and I like these. These are more, I would say of a matte finish under your eyes, but it's more of just more of a soft matte finish. They're not thick and drying. They're just not a super, not a super luminous looking concealer, but I do like them and I want to keep these. All right, while we're talking about that Bare Minerals concealer, we're gonna go ahead and do this one. So this is the concealer I was talking about. This is the Soft Matte Concealer from NARS, and you guys, this is, this is one of, if not my best concealer in my whole collection. I, I'm not kidding, I'm being totally serious. This is a fantastic concealer. I love everything about it. It, it. it does not feel or look like anything else. On my face, this is the shade Madeline, Madeline, and oh my gosh, this is so good. This is good as a spot concealer. It's good for under your eyes. It's good just for your all over complexion product. I use this all the time with no foundation and just this. It gives great medium to full coverage depending on how much you apply and it does dry down to more of a matte finish but it truly is what the name says which is soft matte that's what it is it dries and it is a matte but it's not a dry gross looking matte I can't recommend this enough this is phenomenal and this is why I'm not keeping the bare minerals one because I know I'm always going to go for this one so that is a definite keep all right, moving on to this third section. Okay, let's talk about one that we all know if you're new here, you won't. But if you're not, you know I love this one, the Hourglass Airbrush Vanish Concealer. This is probably the best shade match for me out of all of my concealers. This is the shade Cedar. And it's just a pretty perfect shade match. The only one that's close to as good as this in terms of shade is the one size in light number three, but this cedar color, 10 out of 10, perfection. For me under my eyes, it gives great coverage. A little bit of this also goes a long way, so kind of like that Pat McGrath one, you really don't need a whole lot of this and you can get a pretty full coverage from it, but that is it there. 
in the shade Cedar and I love this one. I will say because this one is pretty pigmented, I think you need to be kind of careful in how much you apply. I do think this could look like pretty heavy on your eyes if you use too much. So just keep that in mind. This one, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go ham with this one. Same with the one size concealer. If you use a small amount, you get great coverage and it's really, really nice under your eyes. So this one is an absolute keep. Next is this one. So this is the Tom Ford Emotion Proof Concealer. I thankfully did not pay full price for this. I got this at the cosmetics company store. <sighs> this was honestly not a very smart purchase on my part. It's okay, but not anything spectacular. I certainly would not pay the full price for this concealer. The shade is really too yellow for me. This is the shade number seven, Tawny. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but this is just not something I see myself choosing to reach for. And for that reason, I'm gonna declutter it. I think this one may actually be discontinued or it's being discontinued. I know Tom Ford recently came out with a new, I think it's the Shade and Illuminate line that there's a concealer in now. I don't know, I'm assuming that one is replacing the Emotion Proof one, but yeah. Nothing great about this one. I don't think it's worth the money. Next, I have two of the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealers. This one, as you probably know, is another favorite. I like this shade the best. So this is Madeline, which is the same as the Soft Matte Concealer, which is there. Again, very, very good shade match for me. Very, very similar to the Hourglass in Cedar. I do think the Hourglass gives better coverage though. So I would say the NARS Radiant Creamy is a medium coverage. I would say uh, Hourglass is definitely closer to a full coverage. And then I also have this shade, which is Creme Brulee. And I honestly really like to mix the two of these when I use this. But typically what I'll do is take Madeline kind of in the center of my under eyes and the outer corner and then I'll take a little bit of creme brulee in the very inner corner because it's that more pinky undertone and it kind of helps with darkness. But these are great. I love NARS Radiant Creamy. I think it's, it's a classic for a reason. It's really good. I will say I don't think it's a very radiant concealer. I'm not really sure why they call it the Radiant Creamy Concealer. I do think it's creamy, but not necessarily radiant. But I do really like these, so definitely want to keep them. Next is this one. This is the Pure 4-in-1 uh, Push Up sculpting concealer. This is pretty new to me. I really like this one. First of all, I love the packaging. You press this little button and it pops out, which I've never seen anything like that. This I really, really like. I like the color, gives good coverage, and I would say this shade on this is very similar to Madeline, again, from NARS, um, and pretty similar to Cedar maybe a little warmer, but I do like this one. It's really good coverage and I always like it when I use it under my eyes. So I am gonna keep this. Oh, and this is the shade LN6. So this is more of a neutral undertone. I honestly think it leans a little bit warm, a little more warm than neutral, I would say, but it works for me. I do like it, so I am gonna keep that one. Okay, let's move on to these. So this is the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Concealer. I have two of them. I have number or shade number four and shade number five. So my thoughts on this concealer is honestly, this concealer does not give much coverage at all. It is, I would say, really a light coverage concealer, maybe light to me, maybe a light medium coverage, I would say, but you're not gonna get a full medium coverage out of this, in my opinion. 
That is the shade number four. And then this is the shade number five. It's a little bit deeper. Shade number four is a little more yellow. This one's a little more neutral, which is shade number five. I will say, I don't think I would repurchase these. I think they're nice, but I, I typically like something with more of a medium coverage and you're just not gonna get that with this concealer in my opinion. Um, I don't know why I felt the need to buy two different shades because I should have known when I got the first one, which was shade number four, that that was not going to be a concealer that I just loved, but I tend to do that with concealers. I bought two of them. I would not do that again. Um, it's honestly kind of a watery consistency, which if you are someone and you don't have a lot of darkness and you just want something really pretty and dewy under your eyes just to kind of brighten it up you might really like this but just what for what I want this is not really it for me um so these ugh, you guys I'm really not sure about these <sighs> they were very expensive so I really hate to get rid of them all right we're gonna put these in the keep for now but I don't know that they'll stay there. I'm gonna go back through one more time in the end, like I said. And then this is also from Giorgio Armani, but this is the Power Fabric Concealer in the shade number two. So this concealer gives much more coverage. I would say this is a solid medium to full coverage concealer. That is it right there. Shade number two is really good for me. Um, this one I definitely do want to keep. This is definitely more my type of concealer. It's definitely a little bit more of a matte finish concealer. It kind of reminds me of that Makeup Forever Ultra HD, but it's nice. I like this one. I do definitely want to keep that one. Then we have Elia, the True Skin Serum Concealer. So I actually kind of rediscovered this one recently. This is one I got a while back, and I just kind of forgotten that I had it and I pulled it out and used it again. This is a really beautiful concealer. Really, really nice. I feel like if you have more mature skin, you might really like this concealer. It gives coverage, but it is very, very thin. It's kind of a thin consistency, light luminous silk, but it gives a little more coverage, but it's still that really lightweight hydrating finish. So I would choose the Elia over the Armani Luminous Silk for sure. And this is really nice. I like this a lot, especially for more light makeup days. I wear the shade uh, Suma, S-U-M-A, and this is really good. I like this a lot. And then last in this container is the Glossier Stretch Concealer. <sighs> I go back and forth with this. This is a really pretty concealer, but what I will say is this is so uh, hydrating that this will crease really badly if you apply too much of it. That's it right there. I wear the shade G11, um, but it's really hydrating. I mean, you can barely see it. I would say this is I would say a light medium coverage. You're definitely not going to get a full coverage from this. When I have used this in the past, I have used it kind of all over my face, under my eyes and on my face. Um, and it's kind of, kind of a lighter weight version of the NARS Soft Matte, but I guess not really because NARS Soft Matte is a matte concealer. This is very dewy. I don't know if you can see, but you can, yeah, you can kind of tell how creamy and hydrating it is. It's really nice, but I don't reach for it. But I do like it. It's not really similar to anything else that I have because like I said, NARS is, is very matte and this is the exact opposite of that. Um, so I think for now I'm going to put this in the keep and then I'll reevaluate at the end. All right, now we're going to move on to drugstore concealers. So I have them in their own section right here. I'm going to go ahead and warn you, I'm pretty positive that most of these are going to get decluttered. <sighs> you guys, I have a thing with drugstore concealers and really concealers in general, but particularly drugstore concealers that the shade range sucks. 
Like, I just, I don't understand why drugstore concealers, nine times out of ten, I feel like the shade range is not good. And that goes for light shades and dark shades. I just, I feel like at this point we should be getting better with shade ranges and I feel like the drugstore concealers are just not cutting it for me um, but the first one here is this one this is Milani conceal and perfect this is the shade light vanilla 120 this I will say the shade is pretty good for me it's very good for me actually but this concealer you guys does not look good on my under eyes it looks dry every single time I use it like very very dry even if I don't use powder it doesn't look good and the, this is sad because the shade on this is pretty good but I have to declutter this because every time I use it I don't like it I just don't like this I'm gonna have to go Ooh, okay, now let's talk about one that I love. I don't think the shade range is good, but I do actually have a shade that works for me, and it's Catrice Liquid Camo High Coverage Concealer. This is the shade number 15, Honey. This is a really good drugstore concealer. I have tried almost every shade in this, all of the light shades, and honey is a really good one for me this is they say it's full coverage i would say it's more of a medium coverage it's very thin it's very hydrating it does not look dry under my eyes it does not crease this is a really good one and sadly you cannot get this at ulta anymore you used to be able to get this at ulta if you were here in the united states but ulta is no longer carrying catrice so you have to get this from their website unfortunately but this I will be keeping. I like this one. Okay, now we'll talk about the other Catrice concealer. This is the new True Skin High Cover Concealer. And this is the shade number 32, Neutral Biscuit. So this shade is too dark. And I bought, I remember I bought this and I thought this was going to work, but it's just a little bit dark for me and now I got this at Ulta when you could still get it at Ulta and now of course you can't so I would have to order it from Catrice <sighs> but it makes me sad because this is a really good one I honestly kind of want to keep it and try mixing it with the other Catrice concealer because I don't think I've tried that yet but the few times I've used this the shade is not good but the concealer is really good. Con Catrice does concealers very well, in my opinion. So I think for now, I will hang on to this one, and I may end up ordering a lighter shade at some point. I don't know, but I like Catrice for concealer. Okay, let's talk about one that is actually pretty good in terms of just the concealer itself, but the shade range is so bad it is so bad I have two of these I have number 15 and number 25 let's see number 15 is light and number 25 is creme brulee I believe light I'll have to refresh my memory but it's very light and it's very very yellow yep so that's it there I mean it is super super light so I don't like that and then I got this one when I did my full face of Revlon because I thought that would be better. But And that one is better, but it's dark. It's just, I don't know. I feel like the dr these drugstore brands just need to get it together <laughs> with their shade ranges. Because this, I want to say this concealer only comes in like, I don't know, like 12 shades total. And... I just feel like they go from really, really light to really, really dark. Kind of like that Bare Minerals concealer I was talking about earlier. And I just, if the shade is wrong in a concealer, it's so hard to use it because shade is everything with concealer. Honestly, shade is more important than the concealer itself. So there they are there. That's light. That's dark. I've actually tried mixing them and I wasn't really crazy about it. It's still... I don't know. It was not good. I know a lot of people say they really like this 
for a drugstore option. And I guess if you have a color that works, I could see where this would be a pretty good one, but I gotta declutter these. I, I just don't like them. Next, we have a favorite for a lot of people. It's Maybelline Instant Age Rewind. This one is the shade Light. I have been in an ongoing battle with myself and this concealer for years. I do not really understand the hype around this concealer. Is it decent? Yeah. But the applicator is horrible. The coverage is not very good. It's a very, very thin. And I don't know. I just don't see anything spectacular about this. I mean, it's good. The shades have improved on this. I do think they've kind of expanded these, which is good. But again, not something that I'm going to choose over my other concealers. I feel like I feel like Maybelline should redo this. Put it with a doe foot applicator, get rid of this sponge tip, and add some more shades. I just, I don't know. I'm just, I'm not a fan. Like even there on my arm, it looks pretty dry and it's very, very thin. I don't know. This is just not really working for me. So that one's gonna go. Okay, here's one that I like. This one's gonna stay. This is Neutrogena Radiant Cream Concealer and this um, the shades on this are not the best, but they're better than some other drugstore concealers to me. So this is it right there. This is the shade, oh, bisque, light, medium, bisque. This is very hydrating. It's not a ton of, it doesn't give a lot of coverage. I would say a light, medium coverage. But it's, it's pretty. I like it when I use it. It's very similar to the corrector version that came out earlier this year that I really like. And I like this a lot. I like the consistency. The color is good. Um, I enjoy this a lot. Sorry, you can hear Belle crying, but um, this is a good one. Next, we have Wet n Wild. This is the Mega Last Incognito full coverage all day concealer. So this I think came out when the tinted hydrator came out. And you guys, first of all, this is not full coverage. I don't know who decided to call this full coverage. It is definitely not. It's very thin, but it looks dry. I'm sorry, but it looks dry under my eyes. I don't, I just don't like it. I don't like it. Every time I use it, I wish I did not. It just doesn't look good. It does not look good under my eyes. And I'm so surprised because the tinted hydrator from Wet n Wild is 10 out of 10. So good. I love that one. This did not impress me. Did not impress me. I'm not a fan of the color really. And the shade range, again, is not good. So not a huge fan of this one. I'm going to declutter it. Okay, let's talk about this one. This is probably my favorite drugstore concealer of all the ones I've tried. It's e.l.f. the Hydrating Camo Concealer. I don't love the original camo, but I really like this one. And I think the shades on this is, are actually pretty good for the drugstore. So I have this one, which is Light Peach. That one's probably the best shade match for me. And then I recently got this one. This is Light Beige. It's a lot more yellow and a little bit deeper um, and I like to honestly I like to put light beige on my face and then put both of them under my eyes um, but yeah this is good great coverage it is very hydrating I don't think it looks dry under my eyes and it kind of gives me the same vibes as my one size concealer just the one size is definitely a better match in terms of shade for me but these are good I like these a lot and they're very, very affordable. So if you haven't tried this from e.l.f., I would recommend this one. Next, we have Maybelline Fit Me Concealer. Again, I feel like a lot of people really liked this. I guess a lot of people still do like it. This is one of the newer shades, I think. It's called Wheat. And okay, again, this is nothing, nothing special. It's a light medium coverage, very, very light medium. It's very thin. 
and it doesn't look great under my eyes. It just doesn't. I don't, yeah, this shade is bad too. It's dark, um, but I've tried lighter shades in this and I still don't like it. I don't know. I know a lot of people say this is a dupe for NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I do not agree. I don't think this has any resemblance whatsoever to NARS Radiant Creamy. To me, this is more of a watery kind of texture. NARS Radiant Creamy is creamy, but it's pigmented. This is not. So this, needless to say, I'm not a huge fan. I'm gonna declutter it. All right, then we have this. This is e.l.f. the Bright Flawless Brightening Concealer. So this is one of their newer products, and it's in a pen applicator like this. This is the shade Light 26N. This is a light coverage, which is not really my favorite, like I've said earlier. To me, I don't know that I would necessarily classify this as a concealer. To me, this is more of a brightener. It's just, there's not a lot of pigment to it. It's very, very thin and sheer. I feel like if you maybe have more mature skin and you just kind of want to brighten under your eyes slightly, you might like this. But it's like, I'm never going to reach for this. I think it might be good for some people. And I don't think it's bad, but it's just not really what I reach for on a daily basis. If I want lighter coverage, I'm going to use a medium coverage concealer and just apply a really small amount. Do you know what I mean? So for that reason, I'm going to declutter. Now this one is pretty good. This is NYX born to glow this one is the shade vanilla i will say i don't really like the applicator again it has that like sponge tip applicator like maybelline age rewind um but this one is pretty good and i think the shades on this are decent and this shade actually for me shade vanilla is very good the only thing with this is I will say this is a very radiant concealer, which makes sense because it says it's born to glow. Um, so it's very dewy, luminous looking. So if you don't like that, you definitely would not like this one. But it's pretty. I think it's, it's good for drugstore for sure. And it's pretty affordable. This one I think I will keep. And then last, another one I have a love-hate relationship with. This is the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Concealer. Again, I have two of them. This one is, let's see, Light 2.5. So Flower Beauty expanded the shade range on these. I think it was around the time when they moved into CVS and kind of came out of pretty much every other retailer. This is one of the newer shades. That's the shade Vanilla. It's light, but it's not bad. Um, definitely better now that they have expanded it slightly because it used to be they just had light one to two and then light three to four and then it went to medium and dark and I think there were only like six or seven shades of it. This one is one of the older shades. This is the shade Light 3-4. That one is better. Um, they're both a little bit light, but the light 3-4 is definitely better for me of the two. Um, but again, I feel like the shades need improvement on this concealer. Um, the sh coverage is pretty good. It's medium coverage. I would say this is just a natural finish. I don't think it's super illuminating. Like, I think it's, what is it called? Light Illusion. Oh, full coverage concealer. Yeah, I don't think this is full coverage. That's just my opinion. I think a lot of concealers claim to be full coverage and they're not. Um, I think this is good coverage, but not full coverage. But I will say this is one of, one of the concealers that I don't hate it when I use it from the drugstore. I just, I think the shades could be better, but I like it enough to keep these. Um, and I do think it's nice. And that is actually it for concealers. Everything left is a corrector back here. Oh, there's one more thing. Um, this, okay, this palette from MAC. So this is one of the Studio Fix Conceal and Correct palettes. 
you're probably gonna think I'm crazy, but I cannot make this work for me. I don't know what it is, but every time I use this, I don't like it. I tried recently to use this pink down here as a color corrector. It looked dry and just really cakey, and I didn't even really love the color of it. I never really use yellow, so I don't use that. These two shades on the top are pretty light for me, so I have to mix them with these, but then I can't ever seem to get the mixture right. I don't know what the problem is, but I feel like this is just not meant to be for me because every time I use it, I do not like how it looks. And I've tried a lot of different combinations of these shades and it just does not seem to work for me. So I'm thinking, sadly, I'm gonna declutter. Okay, actually there's one more concealer. I forgot, this is in my everyday makeup drawer right now and it's the Born This Way concealer from Too Faced. This I really, really like. I use this shade Light Beige and I like this a lot. It's really good coverage. To me, this is the better version of Tarte Shape Tape. It can be a lot if you use too much, but I do think it's, it's nice if you use a small amount of it. And again, this is Light Beige. I like this a lot good neutral undertone and you get so much product in here. One of these will last you forever. So this I do want to keep. Okay, so it's the next day and I'm gonna finish this concealer declutter. The only thing we have left are correctors. I had to kind of change my setup a little bit so that's why the ankle is different. But we're gonna go through correctors and then we'll go back through the concealers quickly and I'm gonna I'm probably gonna eliminate a few more but okay so the first one is a definite keep this is my Milani supercharged brightening under eye tint in the shade peach this is so freaking good I discovered this earlier this year and I'm obsessed with it it's the perfect peachy color it's really, really lightweight, and it's almost like an eye cream, like you can kind of see there. It's very dewy, very hydrating. It's not, definitely not going to cover everything under your eyes, but it's a really good, like, no makeup makeup kind of product, or I sometimes wear it when I go to the gym or something like that, so this is a definite keep. I love this. Next, we have this from Color Science. This is the Total Eye 3-in-1 Renewal Therapy with SPF 35. This is something I really, really love, but it's so expensive. And sadly, this one has definitely expired. I've had it for quite a while. Um, but this is a really, really good product for kind of the same as the Milani. Under eye tint, the difference is this one has the SPF in it. So when I wear this, it's typically when I go to the gym, I'll put this under my eyes. Um, but this is so, this is a great product. I think now it comes in like two or three shades. This was just the original one. Um, but it is expired, but I don't care. It's almost gone anyway. <laughs> so I'm just going to keep it and use it up. But if you don't mind spending the money on this, I really like this. I would definitely recommend it. And then if you don't want to spend the money, you should get the Milani one. Next, I have this one from Sephora Collection. This is the Bright Future Corrector in the shade Peach. Or no, this is the shade Melon. I'm actually going to get rid of this one. It's not bad, but number one... Uh, you can't buy this corrector anymore. And number two, it's not my favorite compared to all my others that I have. It's okay, but not fantastic. This one is a little more on the orangey side, a little less on the peach side. And I kind of prefer more of a peach just for my under eyes. So this one I'm going to get rid of. So this is the same formula as the Bright Future Concealer, obviously, that I decluttered as well. It's okay, just not anything spectacular, so that one is going to go. Next is this from AOA Studio. It's the Wonder Cover Corrector in Peach. I am actually not a fan of this one. This one is a very uh, moussey texture. It's very, very dry. 
Um, I like the color. It's pretty peachy, but it's a very, almost like a clumpy formula. The few times I've used this, I didn't love how it looked under my eyes. So I am going to get rid of that one. Next, we have this one from Neutrogena. This I tried earlier this year. This is the color correcting concealer, but it's a corrector. It's the shade Peach. It also comes in Deep Peach. It's obviously a darker shade and then a green color as well. This is so good. This is the best um, like color corrector from the drugstore that I've tried in a while besides the Milani one. So that is it right there. It's a really good peach. It's not too dark. It's not too light. It's really it's really good. It's very hydrating, very creamy. It doesn't cover everything. I would say it covers a little more than the Milani under eye tint because it's just not as sheer as the Milani one, but it's definitely not as, not as great a coverage as like a Bobbi Brown corrector or the Charlotte Tilbury corrector, but it's really good. This is a definite keep. Next, we have this one from Believe Beauty. This is the Brighten Up Color Correcting Concealer in light medium. So this was the first really affordable corrector that I tried and I really, really loved. This was before the Neutrogena and the Milani one. This I really like still. I would definitely keep it. This one's harder to get your hands on because you can only buy this from Dollar General and I believe now Pop Shelf stores sell this as well and obviously those stores are not everywhere so it's a little harder to get your hands on that is it swatched right there it's definitely obviously a different texture from these two it's a little deeper than the Neutrogena and a little lighter than the AOA Studio one this is really good though and I do like this formula this kind of more of a cream formula for under the eyes. So I do want to keep this. It's also a good one that's really affordable. Okay, next we have the Becca under eye correctors. So I have one of the original ones in light medium and then I have the new Smashbox and Becca version in the shade medium. I was thinking a while ago I was gonna get rid of the original because it's just too light for me. It's very, very, it's very light. It almost looks white on me, but I recently discovered mixing these is a really good combo, and it's a good way for me to be able to use my original one. So I'm definitely going to keep these. This is the medium shade, so you can see it's a lot more orangey and a lot deeper, um, but when you mix them together, it's a really good color combo for me. So I definitely want to keep these. I've done that in a few videos. Mix the two. If you want to see that, I will link it above and below for you. Uh, but that's a really good combo. Okay, next, this is going to be one I'm not really sure about. This is the Fenty Bright Fix Eye Brightener. This is the shade Melon. So I've only used this a few times and my issue with it is the color, really. It's very, very, like, hopefully you can see it there. See how much lighter it is than these? It's almost like, I mean, it really just looks like a concealer to me. When I bought it, I was thinking it was going to be a corrector shade because it's the shade Melon, but it's not. It's just a very, very light I mean, it has a peachy undertone to it, but it's so light that it doesn't really correct anything. The texture is nice, but I just know myself. I know I'm not going to use this. So I think I am going to go ahead and declutter it. Okay, I'm really, really torn about this one. So this is the Urban Decay Naked Skin Color Correcting Fluid. This was my favorite for a very long time before I started really trying out other correctors. But I am not sure what's going on with this product because the last few times I've tried to find it online, it is very hard to find most places. So I assume it's being discontinued. Um, and it's good. It definitely kind of reminds me of the Neutrogena one. 
which is up here. The color is pretty similar on them too. Um, I never reach for this one anymore, so I just don't know. I'm gonna declutter it. I just don't, I don't think, well, no. Okay, we're gonna put this in the keep for now, but this is one I'm not sure about, so this might get decluttered, we'll see. Next is an obvious keep. This is the Bobbi Brown color corrector in the shade Bisque. I'm not gonna talk a long time about this because I talk about it constantly, but this is my favorite. The color is perfect. It's great coverage. It always looks good under my eyes. 10 out of 10, love this. And still don't know if this is being discontinued. If it is, or if I find out, I will let you know, but I still don't know. Another definite keep are these from Charlotte Tilbury. So these are the Magic Vanish correctors. I have medium and fair. Medium is the one I use the most. As you probably know, I use this in so many videos and I love this one. I will always keep this in my collection for sure. I don't use fair as often, but again, I can mix it with medium and use it. So I am going to keep it, but I do think the medium shade works a little bit better for me. Those are definite keeps. And the last one is the NARS uh, Radiant Creamy Color Corrector. Again, I have two of them. I have the shade Light and the shade Medium. I kind of mentioned this in another video. I loved this when I first got it, but the more I use this, the more I don't love it as much. And the only reason I can really give is it's more of an orange corrector than it is it, a peach corrector. It doesn't have any of that pinky undertone in it, which may work depending on the color of your discoloration. But for me, I like something with a little more pink in it. That one is shade medium. That one is way too orange for me. Um, but I'm honestly going to keep these just for videos and things. People always ask me about this corrector, so I am going to keep them. I think they're nice if the colors work for you, but I definitely prefer my Bobbi Brown and my Charlotte Tilbury over this one. Um, but I will keep these for now. Okay, so I pulled all the concealers back over here that I said I was going to keep. We're gonna go back through them one more time and I'm gonna try not to think too hard about each one. I'm gonna go with my gut instinct, I hope. So, first, Makeup Forever Ultra HD Concealers. These are definite keeps. Pure four-in-one push-up concealer is a definite keep. Hourglass. Airbrush Vanish, Definite Keep. NARS Radiant Creamy, Definite Keeps. Ilia True Skin Serum Concealer, Keep. Armani Luminous Silk, Ugh. Keep. Giorgio Armani Power Fabric, Keep. Uh, Jouer Essential High Coverage, Keep. Tarte Ultra Creamy Keep, Dior Forever Skin Correct Keep, One Size Butter Silk Keep, NARS Soft Matte Keep, Catrice True Skin. Okay, I'm actually going to get rid of this mainly because I know this shade is too dark and I know... I just don't know that I'm actually going to mix it with something, so I think that one's going to go. I will probably buy it in another shade at some point, but I think I need to get rid of it. Okay, Catrice Liquid Camo Concealer, Keep. Glossier Stretch Concealer, Keep. Neutrogena Radiant Cream Concealer, Keep. Too Faced Born This Way, Keep. Elf. Hydrating Camo Concealers, Keep. Pat McGrath, Sublime Perfection, Keep. Cover FX, Power Play is a definite keep. 
Rare Beauty, Keep. Can you tell I'm skipping the ones that I want to avoid? Lancome, Tint Idol, the new one is a keep. Kosas is a keep, even though it's too dark and it's too yellow. I want to keep it. Bare Minerals Serum Concealer. I'm going to get rid of this. I don't need it, and you can't buy that anymore. And I have so many more that I like more than that one. So I'm going to say goodbye to that. Then we have NYX Born to Glow. This is a keep. And lastly, we have... Flower Beauty in two different shades here. These are going to be keeps for now. Okay, so I kept most of them, but I did eliminate a few. Um, now we'll just go back through the correctors real quickly. Although I think I got all of these. Bobbi Brown is keep. Becca Smashbox keep. Charlotte Tilbury is keep. Neutrogena is keep. Believe Beauty is keep. Milani Supercharge is keep. Color Science Total Eye. I should probably get rid of this, you guys. This is old. It's almost gone anyway. Yeah, we're going to get rid of it. Ours color correctors are keep. Urban Decay is going to go. The more I think about this, the more I think I'm not going to choose this one over the other ones that I have. So I think that one's going to go. Okay, we did it. So let me count up how many I'm keeping and then I'll tell you how many I'm getting rid of. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put the ones that I'm keeping back in here. I am keeping 29 and I'm getting rid of 17 concealers. I'm keeping 10 correctors and getting rid of five. So still a lot of concealer, but yeah. I'm a concealer kind of person. I like concealer is what I mean. Okay, so I am going to quickly put these away. Okay, so this is what they look like now. Much better, not so chaotic looking. It's still a lot, but I love concealer and I love to use new ones. So I have my correctors back there. And then I didn't really organize these a certain way other than I put drugstore together, obviously. But that is going to be it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this declutter and are ready for some more. I'll see you guys next time. Remember, simply be you. Bye.